Good morning, everyone. You're watching the Fox 19 Morning News. It is 528 Tuesday morning. I'm Rob Lloyd. I'm Sheila Gray. Here's a wrap up of our top stories to help you get your day started. Hope and Christopher are a great example of what happens when people reconnect on Facebook. But there's also a sad, perhaps dishonest side. When Tom started teaching classes here at Woodhill Training seven years ago, none of the students in his classes were women. It's absolutely glorious here downtown along the river near the banks in downtown Cincinnati. And of course, it's the 19th of the month, and we think pink for breast cancer awareness. Oh, I hit myself in the head. <laughs> you get, oh, oh there. you know what I've always wanted to do? Ride the slingshot at Kings Island. Good morning, it's 5 o'clock. I'm Sheila Gray. And I'm Rob Williams. Good morning, everyone. We're still seeing some residual rain, we'll call it, huh? Yeah, a little bit gloomy out there. When's the sun going to come out, Frank? It was some close calls overnight. Police say 74-year-old Charles Holland was driving the wrong way on I-275 near the Ken Road overpass in Forest Park before officers used stop sticks to stop that car. Holland had been missing from Fort Thomas since 7.30 last night. Police say he's not hurt. Also new this morning, a missing elderly man from Cincinnati was found. 78-year-old William McIntosh was last seen leaving his home on Revere Avenue Sunday night. Police believe he was on his way to Walgreens or Walmart in Western Hills. Investigators aren't saying where he was found or what condition he is in this morning. Crews are working to fix this water main break right now in South Fairmount. They were called in around 1 this morning when the pavement started to buckle on Queen City Avenue. The street is closed at Quebec right now. That's Queen City at Quebec. No word on when that repair will be complete, but we'll keep watching it for you on Fox 19. It's 5.04. Early voting begins today in Ohio, and First Lady Michelle Obama is making an appearance here. They're already Reds manager Dusty Baker's back in the dugout. He was treated, of course, for a mini stroke, and he missed 11 days with the team. Baker says he's still not 100%, but he is close. His daughter's with him as the Reds play in St. Louis to make sure he's eating right. Here's Dusty talking about his health and being back with the team. Baker will manage this final series against the Cardinals, and he'll stay in the dugout for as long as the Reds play in the postseason. I'm we hope, of back. course, all the way through yeah. the World Series. I'm, I'm glad so, he's back. I'm, gl I'm sure the guys are glad yeah, he's back, too. Absolutely. As for the team, the Reds are still tied with the Nationals for the best record in the National League. Baker's team has to finish ahead of Washington to get home field advantage for the entire postseason. Of course, they already have it for the first round of the playoffs. Last night, the Cardinals beat the Reds 4-2. to two. They play another one tonight at 8-15 in St. Louis. And this is a big one. Honda is recalling a half million cars. Consumer News is next. Plus, dozens are dead after a boating Look accident off the coast of Hong Kong. That thing sank with more than 100 people on board, and we have the latest on efforts to find survivors. Seats on an American Airlines jet come loose midair. Happening now, the FAA is investigating the incidents on Saturday and again yesterday. A plane from New York to Miami was forced to turn back after loose seats were discovered after takeoff. That flight yesterday landed safely with no injuries. Hey, Here Sheila, huh? I'm Sheila, so making a move. <laughs> You gotta take your chances when you can get them. Uh -huh. So nine days retired. Yeah. How's it going? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. How's Joy love it? Well, I'm not. I don't see Joy. I'm on You're the road right. doing okay. things. Although we did spend some time uh, this weekend in, mm -hmm. in uh, Los Angeles. This is not your first time in Cincinnati. No, I was here a long time ago, and I just laid down a tribute on tape for Nick Clooney, who's being honored as one of the mm -hmm. four Cincinnatians. Um, yeah, I did, I did his show for a week, and we loved it. It was a nice little uh, section about Cincinnati. You it's, saw the big red machine. I thought it was, too. You I don't went know if to the ballet. I don't even know if Cincinnati understands that yet, you know. <laughs> I, I don't think they do. No. I don't think they know there's that nice little yeah, tribute in there. Yeah, because it was really a, kind of a highlight. We liked it a lot. You ate at the Maisonette. Did you try the chili? Did you get our chili here? It's 40 years ago, <laughs> Sheila. You weren't even born yet. Why <laughs> do you care if I had the chili? <laughs> Sheila getting on my nerves. It's delicious chili. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the one thing that you still want to do? It seems to me that you've done everything. You've met big stars. You've done talk shows. You've done radio. You're a great singer. I'd love to do a, a variety show, uh, mainly because I loved uh, the way Dean Martin did his mm -hmm. variety show years ago. And then I... I hosted an infomercial about the, the variety show when they put it back on sale all those years later. Uh, you know, I don't know if it can be done now. First of all, mm -hmm. television is down on variety. Mm -hmm. They want murders. They want, you know, things. But um, that was a great entertainment show, and I think I'd like to do something that entertains people. Can I ask <laughs> one last question? You have this adorable way of always speaking about yourself in the third person. When and how did that start? <laughs> 
You know, I get a kick out of it only because it reminds me of an episode of the Jerry Seinfeld show. Yes. And you never saw this character except there's one of Jimmy. Tw- Jimmy. <laughs> I know. So Jimmy and George go to the gym. And, J- and Jimmy falls down on a <laughs> peel, banana peel. And he says, Oh, Jimmy hurt himself. <laughs> Jimmy needs a doctor. Well, I got such a kick out of that that I, I don't know why, but all of a sudden, Regis wants that. <laughs> and, and it's stuck in my head anyway. But you're one of the few people who, who has brought that up. And, uh, and I'm happy you did. Well, I'm happy to Regis talk to is you. having a good time with <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> I'm so glad. Thank you, Regis. Thank you very much, it's Sheila, for coming down and being with Movie history and this morning, Fox 19 welcomes home Boone County native, star Hi. of the Hunger Games, Josh Hutcherson. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I Thank love you. the movie. <laughs> Scott, what are you doing with that, Rob? <laughs> that Kill must me. be music to your ears, though, that it was that successful. It is crazy. You know, we worked very hard on this movie for a long time, and, and people have been talking about it for a while, so for it to finally come out and, you know, be successful was more than I could ever hope for. Well, for months, people, the movie writers in Hollywood were saying, oh, it's the next Harry Potter, it's the next Twilight. Mm. How much do you listen to that sort of thing? Well, you know, it, it kind of came up a lot in interviews. Um, you know, I just did like, a whole world tour with a big publicity push and everything, and, and you know, they bring up the comparisons a lot of times, but... Well, last week, we saw all this video of girls in New York City lined up for your autograph yeah. and screaming and crying. Mm-hmm. I, what goes through your mind when you see that kind of fan adoration? Uh, it's crazy. A couple of things. One, I, I, there's like a weird disconnect with it all where I, I really don't feel like it's actually me because uh, it, it, it's just too weird and, and, and strange. But at the same time, I mean, it, there's definitely a, a huge sense of pride and, and, you know, it definitely it means a lot for me for them to come out there and, and show their support and, and all that. When you were a little guy, you mm-hmm. know, eight or nine years old, mm-hmm. you had to push your mom and dad to yeah. let you try this yeah, acting yeah. thing. Is this anything like what you were envisioning, envisioning 10 years ago? Yes and no. It's kind of weird. It's like I, I, I always wanted to be an actor, and, and, and even, oh, God, that's embarrassing to look at. <laughs> Four, uh, five, five, seven, eight, seven, 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 eight, 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 and then one more breath, and then you're going to go. And you should feel their chest go up when you do that. You should be able to see, yeah. yes. Okay. And then you go right back into compression. I saved them in so two and a half did. minutes. You saved and here's the best part. <laughs> Annie is not going to get shot this. Annie is now wearing lipstick. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Annie. Right Sarah Wolf has a concealed carry permit. I do travel for work all the time. When I started traveling, I thought that, uh, well, my husband actually encouraged me. I personally think everybody ought to carry a weapon. Why? Because it's, a, it's the only deterrent to people that carry weapons that shouldn't carry weapons. A couple of months after she started packing heat on a regular basis, Sarah says she feels more confident. I do, I do. I bought a 22, which is something that I would fire. Ohio and Kentucky both require residents who want to carry a concealed weapon to complete a training class, like this one at Woodhill Training in Miami Town. Gun is level the whole entire time. Retired Cincinnati police officer Tom Wood and self-defense expert Chris Adams teach two-day classes focusing on Ohio's concealed handgun law. I'm trapped. So I have to ward my thread away. And personal safety. We teach the basic Ohio carry conceal class, which consists of knowledge of revolvers, semi-automatics, the makings, the workings of them, the ammunition, the styles. And then we go into personal one-on-one training scenarios. And in our opinion, that's what saves your life. When Tom started teaching classes here at Woodhill Training seven years ago, none of the students in his classes were women. Now, about a third of his students are women. It's from 21 years old, where they can legally own the gun and get the permit, to 81. We had a lady come in, 81 years old, shoot a group the size of maybe three inches, outshot all the guys. Back away. Just wanted to have the option to carry if I wanted to. Why? in case I need to protect myself from my family. Turn around and walk away! Hannah Macklin was a student in a recent class at Woodhill. It's just a different world even from what I grew up in and definitely from what my parents grew up in. Do you think you will carry? 
Probably. The number of concealed carry licenses issued in Ohio has been steadily growing since 2006. The Ohio Attorney General's Office says more than 56,000 permits were granted in 2009, the last year for which records are available. Since Ohio's concealed carry law took effect in 2004, the state has issued more than 199,000 permanent gun licenses. Kentucky law has allowed concealed weapons since 1996, but to be consistent, here's a look at the numbers since 2004 from the Kentucky State Police. Since 05, the Bluegrass State has also seen a steady rise in gun licenses issued, with a total of more than 171,000 since the law took effect. While the states don't keep records of whether gun licenses are issued to men or women, the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department says women make up about 15 percent of the residents who are licensed to carry. And the National Shooting Sports Foundation says 70% of retailers saw an increase in female customers in 2009. I would go to family functions, I would go to the bank, the grocery store, I always had my gun on me. And I had the perfect little purse for it, no one ever knew it was in there. Susan Butler was a Cincinnati police officer until she was granted a disability retirement about eight years ago. I don't care anymore. When my kids came in the picture, I did not want people to know that I had my gun. I was afraid that if I would go to a bank or a grocery store, I always put in my mind that something's going to happen. I guess I'm a little bit of a pessimist. Susan gave up her gun to focus on her family, but says she's not surprised more women are packing heat. She does warn it's not a decision to be made lightly. You have to be ready to use it because there's only one reason why you're carrying the gun. Well, I think you just have to be a real responsible person and be prepared. At all times, the gun is pointed downrange. If a woman is thinking about getting a con concealed carry permit and carrying a weapon, what should go into that, that decision? <clears throat> I think probably an open mind coming to the class first rather than go buy the gun that her husband says or her boyfriend says or maybe even the gun shop says because we have to fit the firearm to her. One thing that nobody remembers is she's the weapon, the gun's a tool. When you apply for a gun license in Ohio or in Kentucky, you don't have to give a reason. So there's no research on why the numbers have been steadily rising for the past several years. However, I did ask several people with backgrounds in law enforcement, and there are a couple of common theories. Some fear their right to carry will be taken away, and they want to make sure they have that permit in hand. But the more popular reason seems to be people's awareness about crime and the knowledge that police can't be everywhere. It's that fear of becoming a victim, which some some experts believe is heightening people's desire to have one more way to protect themselves and their families. Sheila Gray, Fox 19 News.